Isaiah 60 and Luke 4 17 where Jesus says you've appointed me to, 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 to bring life and wholeness and healing. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. But they turned the church mm. into an entity that was looking good but was not producing fruit. They had lost the proper perspective on what the church was supposed to be. And many of us have lost the proper perspective on us as the church and what we're supposed to be about. You're supposed to be different. You're supposed to be a peculiar person. You're not supposed to be blending in with the world and doing the same thing that the world does so that if we see you and see others, we are, we are seeing no difference. I know Paul said that I become all things to all people that I might win some. But don't get that twisted. When, when you are operating out of the will of God and outside of the parameters of what God's expectations are, you better believe there is somebody who's checking you out. And how then can you be a fruit, a church that brings forth some fruit, a tree that brings forth some fruit? When you are doing the same thing they do. Right. You talk in the same way they talk. You're living the same way they live in, un, in many circumstances. Or you're not afraid to say yes when it's right and no when it's wrong. Amen. Do you have the experience that some of the best things that have ever happened to you is when somebody mustered up enough faith, enough strength to tell you the truth and it sets you free? Amen. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. And it's easy to pat people with, well, baby, I know how you feel. But that's not the fruit God's talking about. God wants to bring empowerment. Yes. Daughter, I know how you feel and I have compassion for you, but you're bigger than that situation. You are stronger than that. You don't have to prostitute your principles and you don't have to lay down. You, you don't have to you don't have to do what the world wants you to do. Yes. Can I just leave it there? Yes, sir. You don't have to go hang out and do stuff with people that you know is no longer what God's calling you to do. Amen. To my young people, you don't have be different. Be the Daniels of your generation. Amen. Be the Shadrach, Meshachs, and the bad Negroes of your generation. <laughs> be that and dare to be different yes. to the glory to the glory of God Amen. and so what God's trying to show us here and I'm, I'm really almost done here he's trying to show that his 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 anger at the trick fig tree was really his anger at Worthless religion. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And so he doesn't want you to be a religious person like the Pharisees yeah. and Sadducees and the Sanhedrin Council, because they were known for their flowing robes. They love to be seen. But he wants you and me to recognize it is not about us. We just represent him. And he wants us to be a good representation. I hear God saying some of y'all's fuse is too short. You get mad as a junkyard dog over the smallest things. Can I help you today? Let me tell you something. The size of what gets you upset is the size person you are. 
I'm going to say it again. The size of what gets you upset is the size person you are. So if little stuff irks you and gets you upset, I want to tell you, you operating like a little person. There are some things you ought to get righteously indignant about. But you ought not be getting upset about every little thing. Just living your life in that place. That's not the will of God concerning you. Somebody did not dot every I and cross every T and you all upset about it. Well, do you dot every T, I and cross every T? Somebody says something to you. Somebody pulls in front of you on the road and you start cussing. You be trying to drive up beside them. You the believer driving up beside them because you just want to give them a nasty look. You ain't going to give them a finger, but you want to give them a look. But you put the meat on that bone. I am calling you to a higher place. Because that's where God's calling you to. The last time I checked, Galatians says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And if those things are operational in your life, I promise you, your life, your life, tell your neighbor, your life is going to go to a wonderful new dimension. Let me put this meat on this and then I won't be finished but I will be done. If, if you claim to have faith without putting it to work in your life, then you're just like the barren tree. Yes. Yes, sir. Genuine faith has great potential. But you need God to help you to bring to bear the fruit for his kingdom. Amen. You and I need God's help to be productive, to go forth and do greater things for him. We need God's help. And that is why I'm so happy that at the call to this altar, many of you all responded and you worshiped God in this, in this context. We have been here at Good Success in a series on how to conquer the giants in our lives. And some of us have got giants of, we preached about the giant of fear. We've talked about week before last, the giant of financial challenges. And we hit on that because we saw so many people who when we did our survey of hands at the two services, we saw that the majority of people said, that's the giant I want to conquer. Anybody here in that crowd, you declare you're going to create, you're going you're gonna to kill that giant? Amen. I want you to know, beloved, that God wants to bring abundance into every dimension of your life. But here's what we have to remember. We've got to remember that in order for God to move, we've got to have faith. Amen. And so back to verse 22, he says, have faith in God. And now here's what I want you to see. And then Jesus says this, he says, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, somebody say this mountain, this mountain. go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Y'all see that? That's in the Bible. That's in the text. I didn't make that up. And you say, well, how do I say to a mountain? No, no, what he's trying to give you, he's trying to give you a picture so that you can see that, 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 that there is a power in faith that can move mountains. Yes, sir. You, 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 am I talking to some people that have ever seen God move mountains in yeah. your life? Or, or maybe you didn't recognize them as mountains. But, but am I talking to anybody who had some situations where you didn't know how things were going to work out? You didn't know how things were going to work out. 
But 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 you were you were while you were trying to figure it out, God worked it out. Am I talking to anybody? You had had a situation in a relationship and it was just terrible. But 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 you didn't know how it was gonna work out. But while you were trying to figure it out instead of praying, God worked it out. Something with your kids, some situation, just didn't know how it was going to work out, but God, God worked it out. But he's trying to help us to know that this kind of faith in God will be able to pray and speak. He says, if you say, now when he says, if you say, we can say that that means when we pray. Because if you say to this mountain, if I pray to this situation, if I pray and believe about this situation. My God, did you hear Deacon Maxine's testimony? The, 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 the doctors are astounded that she's not, you know, in the normal situation. Well, she's faithful. She, she loves God. She, she's a believer in God. She walks in faith. She's a tither. She believes the promises of God. And, and you got to know that because the Bible says that, that if, you, if you tell the mountain to go throw yourself in the sea, and do not doubt in your heart, but believe. You see it in the text? It says what it says, if you believe. Somebody tell somebody you got to believe. You got to believe. So you got to have faith in God. And you got to not have doubt. Because doubt mitigates faith. It neutralizes faith. Either you're going to have faith or you're going to have doubt. So what is the mountain? What is the mountain in your life? Yes. I decree today over your life that we dealt with that mountain at this altar. Amen. I decree over your life that we dealt with this mountain, that God dealt with this mountain at this altar today. Now here's what I have to, a responsibility to do to give you a prophetic warning. Don't think the devil's not going to try to come back. And try to get you worried and try to get you fretting and try to get you upset because you can't see the way. I'm telling you, if you keep on walking and keep on speaking to that mountain and telling that mountain to get behind me, go into the sea. And do not doubt in your heart, but believe what God has said. It will happen for you. Y'all see that? Yeah. And so what that does is that gives us this picture that God can do anything. Amen. Do y'all hear that? God can do anything. anything. Because when you look at a mountain, you think about a mountain. I'm going to say something to the mountain, and the mountain is going to go into the sea. What he's trying to give you is the picture is nothing's too hard for God. Here are our Sunday morning growth groups. Our new members orientation, class 101. Discovering and Growing Your Spiritual Maturity, Class 201. Elder Valencia Copeland will help us discover our life mission in Class 401. We will continue our youth growth group, Know Who You Are. And Pastor Michelle Coleman Bennett will guide our adults and teens respectively through understanding the prophetic and raising prophets of character. Here are our weekday growth groups. Financial Peace with Deacon Maxine Jones. Mondays from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Learn how to study the Bible with Elder William House on Wednesdays from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Understanding and Following the Holy Spirit with Minister Kim Whitehead also Wednesdays from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And our Celebrate Recovery Growth Group has reverted back to its regular sessions without the opioid emphasis. Every Friday, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Here are our Saturday growth groups. Our Mighty Men of Valor and our Women Overcoming Now will meet simultaneously from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And Pastor William Bennett will lead our Health and Fitness Focus Group from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. You got the nerve to be worried about a telephone bill? You got the nerve to be worrying about some little small situation? Your God is a big God. And there's nothing too hard for your God and for my God. What activates him is your faith. He, Jesus says, is, have faith in my daddy. Have faith in God. Yeah. And then he goes on to say in this context, he says that this is a condition that you have to have in order 
to accomplish that which is required. Look at the conditions. Make a note of it. Number one, he says you got to be a believer. Number two, are y'all ready for this? Look at verse 24. You want God to do something for you? Look at what he says. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, you just ask him to move the mountain, right? Yeah. He says, believe that you have it. received it, right? That's a repeat. Right? Re and when you read scripture, when you see something repeated, that is trying to tell you this is a major requirement. Y'all yes. you, you, get that? When you see it repeated in scripture, when he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, yes. surely, surely. When he says something twice, he's trying to get you to get it. He already said it once in verse 23. And now he's saying it again in verse 24. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. Did y'all see that? Yes. He says, believe that you have it and it'll be yours. And then guess what else he says as a criteria? Now, when you are praying, mm. verse 25, if you hold anything against anyone, uh -huh. forgive them. So that your father in heaven may forgive you of your sins and your shortcomings. And you'll be able to produce fruit and not just leaves. Amen. Do y'all see that? Amen. So today, I'm calling you to a place of forgiveness. Amen. Let that mess go. I know it hurt, but give it to God. Yes. Forgive them that have cursed you and treated you wrong and done wrong by you. Forgive those who have done you wrong that hurt you. Forgive that no count. Forgive them because some of you all have been carrying hurt too long. Disappointment. Frustration. Too long. And God says if you're going to see the mountains move First, I want you to absolutely believe, have faith, and then I want you to forgive. Yes. Amen. It's quiet in the house. Yes. Saying don't hold grudges. Amen. Thank you. That's, that's tough sometimes. That's tough. If you think it's tough for you, I just say it's tough for the person sitting next to you. I started to say something else. I'll leave that for now. Here's what I want to close on. When you pray, listen, when you pray, pray and ask God to move on your situations, but don't be just selfish. In other words, pray for others also. Sometimes I hear people praying, it's all about me. Lord, bless me. Lord, make this way for me. Lord. And there is a place for you to intercede with God on your behalf. Well, not intercede. There's a place for you to take your petitions to God. But intercession means generally you're praying for others. That's right. That's right. But I want you to remember another principle that's important for you to know. And God says this, what you sow into the life of others, God will bless you. Right. And so pray indeed. For yourself, but don't let that be all you pray for. That's right. Amen. That's right. Don't be a selfish prayer. That's a principle that he's saying. And then remember, last but not least, when you pray, pray for something that's going to do some good for the kingdom of yes. God. Yes. Because all of us here are designed and we are planned and appointed that we are supposed to expand the kingdom of God. I had to go, friends. I didn't mean to hold you this long, actually. I was just going to give you, just drop a couple of things off uh, here because God's already moved in our midst. But I, I just want you to recognize that he's in the mountain moving business. Amen. The Jesus that we're going to commune with in just a moment, he's in the mountain moving business. Yes, it but it's going to require you to use your faith for him to move the mountains. Yes, it's going to require you to believe what's hard for you to believe. It's going to be hard for you. It's going to be require that you trust God when you cannot trace God. It's, it's going to require that you not just get caught up on, on the situations of what you see, but that you see beyond what you see. And you see a God who has never lost a patient. You see a God that's got the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills belong to him. That you see a God who knows how to bless you more ways than you know how to ask. That you see a God that has got, it's his good pleasure to bless you. He wants to. You. He promised to bless you. Amen. And he will bless you.
but he gives his connection here. He wants you to bring forth good fruit. He doesn't want you to just be a good looking Christian. He wants you to be a fruit bearing Amen. believer. Amen. 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 I say this and I close. This Jesus we serve, man, what a great Savior he is. The question is always, who is he to you? To me, he's God in the flesh. God so loved us that he sent his only begotten son oh, that whosoever would simply believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. To me, he's the son of God. Yeah. But not only is the son of God, he's the God that became human so we could see him. And that the Bible says that he endured the same challenges that every one of us had. He knows what it is to see people betray him. He knows what it is to see people who do him wrong. But he is also, as Michelle uh, preached today at her uh, talk today in the prophetic class, he's also the Messiah. And that means he's the anointed one that came to take away the sins of the world and to pay the price for your salvation. Somebody ought to say thank you for that. If you got any background that you're not too proud of, he washed it all away and he takes care of it and it's no longer to be held into captive and all of that. And not only is he all of that, but he's also the God that comes down here to help sinners and the one that comes to forgive sinners and the one that comes to help us to know that he's the overcomer of death so that in Christ now, death has no more power over us. We don't fear death. We know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He's the God that gives eternal life. Yes, sir. He's the one that heals the sick and will heal you of whatever sickness you have. Yes, he will. Amen. By his stripes, he'll either heal you or deliver you. Amen. I believe God for that. Yes. Sometimes death is deliverance. Yes, Sometimes he heals us by taking us out of this mess and let us open our eyes into the new Jerusalem. Yes, Jesus comes to help us. And what he teaches, listen, I'm finished. What he teaches, he teaches with authority. Yes. And so as he teaches it with authority, in other words, it's no, it's no issue around whether or not it's accurate. The issue is whether or not you're going to walk in what he's teaching. Yeah. And if you do that, God will bless your life and you will bring forth not only good leaves, but you'll bring forth good fruit. Amen. We tied this together, actually, beloved. <laughs> Because one of the things that we see is that Jesus never disobeyed God. We tied this together with overcoming and conquering the giant of finances. Because what ends up happening, listen to me and I'm done. Sometimes we end up being financial bondage because we took the resources that God gave us. And what we did was use it to make us look like a better flower. We got what he gave us so it could make us look like a better tree. But what we see is that there's not fruit on the tree. Which is a misuse and an abuse of what God has provided. Because when he provides you, he says, I'm providing you for your needs. But you used it on your greeds. And as a result of that, that's why for many, many people, it's a major problem. On the other hand, God provides and money is not, the amount of money is not an issue, but yet you are still in disobedience to God because you won't honor God with what you have and you won't let him be the Lord of your life. So you got all the nice trimmings and you got all the nice stuff and you look good, but you're not bringing forth the fruit that he wants you to bring because you're still in charge of that which he has blessed you with. Amen. What kind of tree you gonna be? A tree that just looks good? Or a tree that's bringing forth good fruit? I declare over your life because you are free in God, because God has met you in this place, that you're going to be a tree that brings forth great fruit. Yes. And it'll all go to the glory yes. of God. Yes. Will y'all receive that today? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Hey, this is Dr. Bill Bennett from Good Success Church in Washington, D.C., and I want to thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. We pray that the message has been a blessing to you today. Listen, if you're ever in the D.C., Maryland, or Virginia area, we welcome you to come by and visit with us. I'm sure you'll be inspired by our 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, or 12 o'clock services. And we're located at 4401 Sheriff Road Northeast in the Deanwood community of Washington, D.C. Listen, if you'd like more information about the church and all of the various things that we're doing, we'd love for you to give us a call. Uh, 202-398-3000, or you can certainly tune into our website at goodsuccesschurch.org, goodsuccesschurch.org, or you can certainly connect with us on all the social media platforms, Good Success Church DC, and we'd love to connect with you. Listen, here at Good Success, we are about reaching people and helping them to grow, and we service our community in a multiplicity of ways food, harvest, clothing, bank, and so many other ways we serve this present age because we know God wants us to reach and touch people. So I just want to share with you that if you'd like to get more information, again, please feel free to call us at 202-398-3000 and we'll be sure to get back in touch with you and connect with you. You know, here at Good Success, we are making an impact in this community, and we'd love for you, if you are so led, to sow a seed into the work that's here. We feed hundreds of families a week here at Good Success. We live in, and our church is located in what's called the food desert, and so we have partnerships with local healthy food stores where we bring resources in. But not only locally are we serving people, we support orphanages where hungry, starving children live and we make a difference in their lives in Ethiopia. Wish you could see it. We've been there to see it. And so you can make a difference. You can bless our ministry and help us and take this great work that we do around the world simply by reaching out to Good Success. You can either text 73256. You can give to Good Success that way. And you simply text 73256 and you text GIVE to the number two GS space and the amount that you'd like to sow. I'm telling you it will be good seed into good soil. And we'd love for you to come alongside as a partner to help us continue to do the kingdom building work that we are doing. Thank you so much in advance for whatever you can do to help us help expand the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, if you like a copy of today's message, that message is available for you. You can just simply call 202-398-3000. We believe it'll be a blessing to you. We believe it'll inspire you, encourage you, and help you have good success in your walk with the Lord. Again, thanks for tuning in. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next week on Successful Living. Same place, same time, same station. Take care.